More than 700 aged care homes across Australia are battling fresh outbreaks of COVID. Two years into the pandemic and this is a statistic that should anger all of us. Let's discuss with Senator Jackie Lambie who's in Burnie in Tasmania and in Sydney 2GB's Chris Smith. Nice to see you both this morning. Jackie, we've had so many deaths. We've had inquiries, a Royal Commission and still this happens. Um, yeah, it's been absolutely atrocious. But what's even more atrocious than that is when Richard Colbert wants to go to the cricket instead of standing in front of a committee so we can get some answers on what is going on in these in, in these aged care homes. People want to know. The people in there want to know. Their loved ones want to know. And we can't get any answers because, oh, no, Richard, good old Richard, the minister, is out there watching the bloody cricket because that's far more important. I can tell you, we're fuming. The absolute committee is absolutely fuming. So the sooner you get in front of us, Richard... The better off we're all going to be and the better off those aged care homes are going to be, I can tell you right now. Well, I mean, and, th and this is the problem, right, isn't it? And, and look, you know, I, I, I've read what you've said about uh, Richard Colbeck, the aged care minister, you've totally unleashed, that he went to the cricket, he went to the Ashes in Hobart instead of fronting a Senate committee and his reason for was he couldn't justify diverting the time and resources of his office as, um, as the pandemic was at a critical point. Chris, your thoughts on this? What an entitled prat. What a complete moron. We already know that in 2020, uh, late 20, he forgot the numbers that existed in terms of the first vaccination rollout in aged care. He stumbled on that. He made himself look like a fool then. He should have been punted then. If this is not a good excuse for Scott Morrison to punt him today, what is? He's gone to the cricket. He's made up some fake rubbish about being busy. He wasn't busy at all. And he should have answered some questions. Now, we're not getting the widespread death rates coming out of aged care, seeing that they're, you know, three quarters of them are triple vaxxed, etc. And it is a milder variant. But we're still losing people. And he is the minister involved. It's a complete... He's a complete fake, this bloke. I mean, Jackie, how does he still have his job? Ugh. Oh, who knows, Because maybe because the Prime Minister hasn't got many powers left, I don't know. But the other thing is this, I want to say this to the people in aged care. We know you've done it really, really tough. We all want to send our love to you because we know that many of you are back in lockdown again. You can't see your families. Um, so it's not just about the vaccines. And this is why Richard needs to show up. It's also about the um, psychological uh, impairment it's having on them because they're doing it really... This has been going in and out of aged care for two years. Mm. And I can tell you... Uh, what I'm hearing from that and their workers, and not, not to mention the double shifts those workers are carrying out because people are going down with COVID and having to take time off work, it's just bloody awful. So, you know, so there's an array of things that need to be discussed here. You don't have time to go the bloody quicker, Richard. Mm -hmm. uh, and, Chris, look, in four aged, co uh, aged care homes in Sydney right now, there are 170 cases. 170. What would you like to see happen? And, 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 and how do we handle this? Because the, the mental health impact of, of locking down and, and locking the elderly in their rooms is doing more damage than the virus itself. Well, this is where we need leadership. You know, I was talking to uh, Shane Fitzsimmons last night and I remember during those bushfires, and bear in mind we had 12,000 bushfires in New South Wales alone, uh, he was there to reassure people. He was there to say, this is what we're doing about it. Well, that's what Colbeck would do if uh, the Prime Minister was gutsy enough to put him in front of a camera, and he's not. But as soon as they emerge from National Cabinet today, you can bet as soon as Scott Morrison goes to that podium, he's going to be bombarded with questions about aged care. This is where you need a leader to reassure those inside and, or, and the public that you've got this under control. Yeah. Look, um, something else I want to talk to you both about this morning too. Um, Mark McGowan's tough border stance. There is no reopening date. That means the West Coast Eagles and the Fremantle Dockers, they're considering relocating east ahead of the season opener on March 16. This is huge, Jackie, if those AFL teams have to leave WA. Uh, well, if they have to leave, they have to leave. If they have to be able um, to play and, and, and do it from outside of there, they have to, they have to do this. But Someone tell me, Art McGowan, uh, it doesn't, closing the borders is not going to stop the spread. It's still going to happen. So I'm not quite sure whether what's he just waiting for everyone to get a booster shot. What blows me away more than anything, I don't know what, what's in the water in Western Australia, but over 70% of them want the borders left closed. <laughs> My goodness. I don't know, but, you know, you've got to come back into the rest of the world. You've got to get, you know, you've got to open those borders sooner or later. The Omicron is here and he's here to stay uh, and it's going to go through your communities whether you like it or not. So we really need to get on with it. 
Look, that m number might be 70% at the moment, but, Chris, the thought of uh, losing the two AFL teams, that might well. change people's mind. I think it'll put a lot of pressure on McGowan. They love their AFL in, in Perth and across Western Australia. And the problem he's got, if the longer he, he, he delays this, the more chance he's got of approaching a cold winter season and having to deal with two, one pandemic and also a flu a, a, and cold season that he can't control either. How do you find the space in those hospitals in Perth and beyond to, to fit those two fronts that'll come at him the longer he leaves it? Yep, the more trouble it's going to be. Um, talking about trouble, Nick Kyrgios. <laughs> i tell you what, he has got under the skin of Kiwi player Michael Venus, who he knocked out of the men's doubles. Just take a look at this serve. His maturity level is about... <clears throat> it's probably being generous to a 10-year-old to say that it's about at that level. You know, there'll always be his supporters and he'll always spin it in a way that, that helps him. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, he's just an absolute knob. Wow. Whoa, Jackie, is he a knob? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be saying that about our Kyrgios no. with him because I'm looking like a knob right now anyway. But um, I certainly I certainly say this. Look, he's, he's a bit of a show pony. He likes to uh, hit that ball. He likes, you know, he's enjoying himself out there. I thought that was the Australian way. If the Kiwis don't like that, then um, they can go and stick it up their bottom. But uh, quite frankly, <laughs> we love him. He's out. I don't know where that's come from this year, but really, Australians, we don't need to be doing it. Mm. I, I just think with language like that, you know, it's, it's so diplomatic, Jackie. You should be our new foreign minister. Yes. yes. Imagine that. <laughs> you know, you'd sort out Ukraine and Russia, done. <laughs> France, done. All sorted. Chris, are, are you in the Kyrgios camp, or does Michael Venus have a point that if it was the role was reversed, Kyrgios would flip his lid? Oh, I'm in the Kyrgios camp when he wins. Um, but, but, but Venus is right, he is a knob, and unfortunately <laughs> he, is, he is at the intellect of about a 10-year-old. We all agree with that, we're not debating that, but he's also a sore loser, and this is the oh. advantage you get when you play in your own home ground. You can rev up the crowd, mm. and you can intimidate the opposition, and the Kiwis hate it. Yeah, and I tell you what, the doubles tennis has been unreal to watch, oh, hasn't the it? The best. Yeah, and there's plenty more of it today. We've got, um, you know, we've got the boys on, Dylan Alcott, we've got Ash Barty. It's all happening today. Nice to see you both. We'll talk to you soon. G'day, it's Ali. And Carl. Thanks for watching the Today YouTube channel. <laughs> Subscribe now for brand new videos every day and exclusive bonus clips. Ali, say please. Please? Why? Please? I don't know. <laughs>